All right, folks, Greg here with GVS Outdoors. Um, we're going to do something a little different today. Um, we're getting out here and try to do a little bit of grouse hunting. I am not terribly hopeful. Um, the grouse numbers have been awful the last few years. And uh, matter of fact, last year I didn't even shoot at one. I put a few up and I just felt bad taking a shot at one even. Um, but all that commotion you can hear in the background there, that's the bird dog and he shamed me into it. Um, he needs to get out and do a little bit of hunting. It's just that simple. So he is, he is in the truck here about to turn himself inside out. And uh, I'm going to get him out of there before he does any real damage. And we're going to get out and take a few casts here. Um, they shut down the road. Um, this National Forest Road is usually open a little later in the season. And uh, they shut it down. So I can't get any further up it than this. Um, so I'm going to hit a couple spots here. And then i got a couple other ideas up the road a little bit that I may go and check. But um, if anything, you're just going to see the dog running around. Um, I, I highly doubt that I'm going to flush any birds. Um, if I do, you probably won't see them either because it's awful thick. This is what we're dealing with over here. So, I don't know how the video will be, but... Uh, I promised you I'd get a little bird hunting in, and this is going to be one of them. So let's get out there and see what we can get into. All right, Gus, what do you think? We find a few birds, huh? You ready to find a few? I'd say you are. Let's go take a poke up through here. Come on. Good guess. Oh. Birds. Get your nose off the ground. Let's go find a bird.
Yeah, we'll just let them pick over this. They did a bunch of cutting up here, but it was clear cuts. And when they did that, they came in and slashed a few areas. Which is good. I'm glad they did. But but there's just not enough areas like this, unfortunately. But this is an area where 20 plus years ago they actually did a couple of really good habitat projects but it's all getting older now so come leave it, leave it be. it's also where everybody comes to dump their deer carcasses So the nice thing about Gus is, as he's gotten older, he's going to be 11. And as he's gotten older, he stays close. When he was a young pup, and he was excited, this is only a second or third of the year, unfortunately. But when he was a young pup and excited and hadn't hunted much, Boy, he would, he would get all over the place. He had some legs on him. Back in, back in. Come on. He could really make tracks. Pretty athletic dog. But, just like me, he's getting a little older and He thinks about it a little closer now whether he wants to put out all that energy or not. Fine with me. Come here. Back in. It's one thing if you hunt quail or you hunt open country or pheasants or something like that for them to put a little bit more distance on. And he does if the terrain's more open. But in the thick stuff like this, if a grouse goes up, you probably won't even see him if he's not 20 yards from you. Back, back. You got a little birdie there for a second. It could have been deer too. There's a lot of deer something in here. He doesn't typically chase them, but 
he's excited about hunting so even seeing just about anything might might get him going What you got there, Gus? He looks pretty birdy. But he hasn't really stopped. Turkey scratch. Wouldn't surprise me to put a woodcock or two out of here, but the woodcock are out of season right now. Come here. Which is always hard. You get so few shots, it's hard to not take the ones you get. But. Right here. Let's go. Oh, are you getting old? You're supposed to be up there. He likes thick stuff. Brush piles. Trying to stay out of the uh, thick stuff because I'm going to make a loop and then kind of swing back around through it. Come here. If you're going to see a grouse, that's where they're going to be. Not in this stuff. And he knows it. That's why he doesn't want to come up here. I know it. There's no birds here. And you know it too. That's a bird.
Yeah, he's on point now. <laughs> Might be another. Whoa. Good boy, whoa. Good dog, whoa. Whoa, yeah, that's right where he was sitting. The wind was blowing the other way and he didn't wind him. Shoot. That's exactly where I would have expected to. Okay. Okay, Gus. There might be another one in here yet. That's for sure where he was setting. Okay. Okay, Gus. Okay. I think he got up, Gus. Okay, here. Okay. He's trying to keep him from running. Okay. I'm sure there's not a second one. Well, I say that, but you always want to trust a dog. Okay. I think that bird went across the road. So we may go down and look for him, yeah. Okay. Okay, Gus. I know, that stinks, doesn't it? Man, that was technically my fault. I should have waited for the dog to make his loop. And I was trying to push him where I wanted him to go. That was my fault. If he'd have finished making a loop, he would have flushed that bird either right back towards me or he would have held the bird one or the other. find another. If there's one, there's another. Once he finds one bird or smells one bird, it's like all the goofy stuff he does is gone. Like it's game on again. He gets real optimistic. Come here, guys. Let's go. I don't feel too bad about not getting a shot of the grouse. Like I say, there's so few of them around. I never hit them anyway, but I don't feel so bad about not taking a shot in here. If I was hunting up north of here where there's a few more birds, it'd be one thing, but there's not a lot of them here. Where do you get to, Gus? You know what? I might push through here. A little further than I thought here. Come here. Come here. Come here. 
There he went again. Come here, Gus, right here. That was a big red phase grouse. I could have shot there, but the dog hadn't winded him. See? That's exactly where he was sitting, and I did the same darn thing. The dog was getting a drink, and I came in here without the dog. If I hadn't have done that, he would have probably pointed right about there. Dog gone. He didn't go far the first time. Maybe he'll do the same trick the second. Exactly the kind of place you'll find them. Thick cover, a couple of openings. There's gravel down there for him to get into. Come on, come on, guys. He can go far again, so. It's just a single bird. There's not a second one with him. From the looks of it. Come here. If he's up here, he's sitting in those laurels. Which means when he comes up, he's not gonna be too high. And if he is, it's a clear shot. I'm not gonna make the same mistake. I'm gonna let the dog work. And I'm just gonna stay behind him. Last place I saw him was right up in here. He could have gone six miles this time. That's the second time we moved him, so. That's the thing with a pointing dog. When you don't hear him anymore, when you don't hear him anymore, you better go looking for him. Well, I think we can chalk that one up to operator malfunction. Not the dog dog's handler but we moved two birds or one bird twice I don't know I don't know which and where I live that is a uh, that's a pretty serious feat pretty serious feat to flush two birds in a day Here goes. which is sad there's no reason with some proper forest management that this couldn't be just exactly like some of the states that have better numbers Michigan Minnesota Wisconsin just a little bit of common sense management and you'd be able to have everything we have plus more um, bears deer grouse heck quail um, all, all of them disappeared because of lack of management and I hate to be a pessimist and I'm not but unless hunters themselves and um, folks that folks that know these things and care start supporting some of the organizations that do something about it. Rough Grouse Society is one of them. Um, American Woodcock Society. Um, American Bear Foundation. You know, some of those types of organizations that are conservation minded and understand hunting as a conservation tool. Until we start, until we start really, you know, supporting some of them, because those are the ones that have the, the right idea to lobbying and they're paying attention to the things that are going on and the average guy can't do that other than spending a few of your hard-earned dollars to support something like that so that's kind of the conclusion I'm coming to this this piece of ground right here was managed by the rough grouse society 20 or 25 years ago 
it's not by chance that I came here with the dog, put the dog on the ground, and within 25 minutes, flushed two birds. It's not by chance. Um, but this cut gets older every single year. And they, right now, have a moratorium on cutting and don't have the ability to get in here and cut it again. Um, that's a problem. I mean, this is just a, all this was, was a bulldozer's width plowed through this here and then another one 30 yards from there and that's all they did 25 years ago and today it still holds birds and it's one of like three places that I know of within two hours of, of Roanoke my home um, where there's still grouse um, I, and I can go out and I can walk through the hills for for two or three days and I might flush one but this is this is where they want to be because it was managed and it was managed right a long time ago so um, I'll put some links in the description of the of the video here um, if you're if you're a bird hunter or you know, just care about these sorts of things um, you know a membership to the rough grouse society or, or, or American Woodcock Association Ducks Unlimited you know, places like that um, find out what they're doing you know verify it verify that they're doing good work and, um, and and then you know throw them a few dollars or buy the subscription to their magazine or whatever it is that supports the effort because um, if we don't if we don't start caring about some of this stuff um, a lot of our a lot of our hunting is just gonna just gonna go away or just gonna be so poor that it's not worth it um, I hate to say this but I probably won't buy another setter when Gus is gone I, I love him and I love hunting with him he's been a great dog um, upland bird hunting is by far my favorite. I'd rather hunt upland birds than deer or, or bear or anything. Um, I love bird hunting. But, you know, the sad truth of it is he's been laying on my living room floor getting fat um, because there's not enough birds to go out and chase and I didn't want to take the effort to do it when I had to go out and kill a couple deer or a bear, you know. Um, I, I hate saying that, but it's just... Uh, it's a lot of work to, to flush, you know, 8 or 10 or 12 grouse in a, in a whole season. Um, and then some of the places that actually manage it, well, you can go out and flush 8 or 10 or 12 in a day. Um, that's, that's what we need. So, sorry, I'll get off my soapbox and get back to seeing if we can find a bird or two. Come here. Good boy. He's a good dog. What a good dog. Come here. Gus the bird dog. He's a good boy. Alright folks. Well, it didn't go it didn't go as I planned and I didn't fire a shot, but um, yeah, you don't you don't measure success in those terms when you hunt grouse. <laughs> um, we saw we saw one bird twice or two birds, however you want to count that. I don't know. Um, in just a short short little hunt here, Gus is happy. He ain't ready to quit yet. So I think what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna go up the road since this road road's closed. I'm gonna head up the road a piece. And we're gonna see if we can find uh, find one more in one more spot that I know of. So we're gonna we're gonna pack it up, and move, and uh, stick with me, and we'll be back with you in a little bit. GVS Outdoors. All right, folks. Greg here, GVS Outdoors with Gus, and uh, that was it for the bird hunt for the day. We ended up actually not being able to uh, to go anywhere else through. Uh, the roads were all shut down. They shut them down a little bit early this year, and uh, I didn't really feel like walking seven or eight miles to get back in and hit a spot or two. So it was a short hunt, but we did see a couple birds. Um, we got a couple weeks left in the season. I think I've got one more, one more chance to get out and do a little hunting. So hopefully we'll be able to do that uh, here in the in the near future, and maybe even be able to get a video or two on there. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm going to put a link in the. Uh, 
in the description of the video here for a couple of those a uh, couple of the organizations that are doing some conservation work and doing some uh, some good stuff for the for the grouse and for some of the other critters around go check them out do your homework um, you know look at that and see if it's something that you support if you like the way they do it and if you do then uh, then get behind it um, that's that's really the only way that some of this stuff is going to uh, going to improve and some of the only ones that are doing some improvements and some uh, work on that front are, uh, are organizations like that so check them out uh, thanks for watching thanks for tuning in hopefully next time we can get uh, a little bit more action and maybe get a close-up picture of a uh, of a grouse or something like that uh, if we ever uh, manage to knock one down so stay stay with me we'll be back fishing before too long here hopefully uh, a little more bird hunting even once the grouse go out we might do a preserve hunt or something like that so um Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming along with us. Enjoyed it, and uh, we'll do it again next time. GBS Outdoors.